Welcome to this week's BartenderHQ.com podcast. Happy New Year, everyone, and you've survived Christmas. Uh, now, what do you do in January when it's quiet? Let's have a look at the different options that you've got. We'll go through our usual drink of the week, and uh, let's get on with the show. Welcome to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at BartenderHQ. Here's your host, David Scooby Sangwell. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, congratulations on getting through Christmas. It's the busiest time of the year for us guys behind the bar, so well done there. Uh, New Year's Eve as well, obviously a very busy time for us, so um, hopefully you've made some good tips over Christmas, you've made a lot of money that you can obviously uh, enjoy through January when it's a little bit quieter and you've got a bit more time to yourselves. Um, But what's the best thing that you can do during January to make this year better for you and make it even better, make it the best year you've ever had behind the bar? Uh, Now, there's a few different things. Um, I'm personally sort of recommending that you invest a little bit in yourself um, and it's to obviously make yourself a better bartender for 2015. Now, there's a whole bunch of different areas that you can look at, but one of the things, um, if you've been listening to this podcast for a while, you, know, you will know about A Bar Above and the Mixology Talk podcast with uh, Chris and Julia Tunstall. Um, now, these guys have got a great website over at abarabove.com, and they also have a couple of courses that they were kind enough to give me access to. Uh, now, I'm still working my way through them because there's so much information in there, and I'm learning an awful lot uh, that I thought I knew already and finding out a whole bunch of new stuff. So it's really good, it's really in-depth, and I do recommend that you guys take a look. They've got two courses over there, uh, one which is called Understanding Cocktail Components, which I thought to myself, well, that'll be quite a breeze, get through that quite quickly. Uh, There's a bunch of stuff in there that I didn't have a clue about, about different acids that they use, about different um, souring agents, different bitters... Um, it's so worth um, checking out. So get over there. Um, there's a link in the show notes um, to the Understanding Cocktail Components course. And then they've got a Mixology 101, which I'll be honest, I haven't even got to yet. Um, but it builds on the foundation of the Cocktail Components course uh, and how to design cocktails. They've got some great um, stuff over on their website as well, including how to monetize uh, your cocktail design skills and that sort of thing. So go and uh, check that out over at abarabove.com. Um, if you click through the link in my show notes, then I think I'll get some credit for it. So why not? Help me out. Thanks. Um, moving on from that, other ways that you can add value for your guests in the new year, and sort of you can think of this as a bit of an extended version of our normal tips for tips section that we'd have. Um, there's not a huge amount of news out there in the bar uh, world at the moment, um, so let's do an extended tips for tips and some different ways that you can add value for your guests. Now the first one, which uh, I know I've mentioned a lot of times on the podcast, is because I work with a magic shop as well, um, but adding magic uh, behind the bar is a brilliant way to make yourself stand out as a bartender and to make your guests really remember you and uh, and, and they'll start talking about you to their friends. Have you seen that guy? Oh, he's doing magic tricks behind the bar. All that sort of thing. It's brilliant publicity. It'll get more people into your bar. And it'll get people asking for you specifically. And that's what you want at the end of the day. So um, I'm recommending a couple of different products here. Uh, there's one which is called David Penn's Street Magic Secrets. It's a two DVD set. Uh, there's a link again in the show notes. I don't get any um, commissions on these. Just so that you know. Um, but I do work for the shop. So you know interpret that as you will um i don't get money directly from it but these are products that i think you would benefit from um so the street magic secrets dvd set it's two dvds um and it will last you for quite a while there's about 25 different tricks on there nothing that you need specific equipment for um other than a regular deck of cards um if you pick a couple up there's a couple of gimmicks that you can make up yourself for a couple of the routines there's like a three card monty style routine Uh, which is the gambling style routine that everyone knows. There is magic with coins, there's magic with banknotes, there's turning lottery tickets into cash, Uh, there's there's a banknote that will actually fold itself up on the palm of your hand, you can then hand out um, for your spectators to examine. 
and all of the techniques are fully explained so you get like um, David Penn doing his effects in a street magic style so a bit like your kind of David Blaine Dynamo kind of um, DVDs or TV shows that you've seen out there before um, and then we go back to the studio and you're taught in detail how to do every effect um, so that's well worth a look if you're new to magic uh, it's very simple stuff and you can do it straight away there's nothing that you really need to practice for hours um, if you've already done some magic before uh, this is a little bit more expensive but it's very very much worth it and it's also available as an instant download from World Magic Shop which is Doc Eason's bar magic set it is kind of the gold standard in bar magic uh, Doc Eason um, I think is from the Rocky Mountains and the stuff that he does is awesome anniversary waltz is a standard among magicians worldwide it's used all the time you get a car oh, you get two cards uh, signed and they basically meld together into a single card that's signed on both sides um, which they can then keep as a, a souvenir that is one of the most used tricks in magic uh, it doesn't make it any less magical it is absolutely fantastic working magicians around the world use this effect um, so check that one out if you want to do a bit of magic for your guests uh, it's not for everyone but if uh, if you think that your guests would appreciate it go for it um, flare is my next uh, mention so if you don't flare bartend already now is the time you've got some time spare I would guess you're working less shifts over January or you are taking some holiday taking a bit of leave um, put a bit of work in and learn some flair uh, I've put in the show notes a link to our flair 101 post which is basically how to learn to flip just a lime a lime wedge or a garnish into a glass uh, it breaks it down as simply as I can do in text um, so that you know exactly the steps to take and then it also takes it to the next level with some stuff later on you don't need any special equipment again you can use a glass from home you can borrow a glass from the bar you can use a shaker tin um, to catch in it doesn't matter just give it a try um, see if you can learn it try and learn it with both hands as well that's something that I didn't do early enough in flare bartending so make sure that any tricks that you learn try and learn them ambidextrous that way you can vary your stuff up so much more easily and when you come to putting a routine together you're not limited to having to get whatever prop it is into your stronger hand before you um, before you perform your big move um, you will still have a stronger hand but the more you can do with both hands the better for you um, bar bets is the next one that I've got uh, on my list so bar bets are basically any of those little puzzles that you can give to your guests you know it could be with match trick uh, match sticks it could be with um, a little pile of you know the the sort of thing like where you have to get the olive uh, into the glass without touching it um, downing two pints of a liquid before someone else can down three shots or whatever that kind of thing uh, there's a video over on uh, down in the show notes again I've put a link I'm trying to keep this as easy as possible for everyone uh, there's a link to a post I did earlier this year from uh, scamschool.com they've also got some free magic stuff that you can learn as well there so if you if you really don't want to put any money into this straight away go and grab yourself a free trick from scam school try out behind the bar if you find it works well for you then pop back and check out the links for the world magic shop stuff um, but there's a, a link to uh, how to cheat at a drinking race and win um, check that out if you like it have a look through some of the other videos on Scam School and you can get a whole bunch of free content and stuff that you can do behind the bar uh, to make the night more interesting for your guests straight away um, if you're really not into the sort of show offy stuff at all if you don't want to be doing puzzles if you don't want to be doing flair if you don't want to be doing magic it's not a problem if you want to really concentrate and your brand your personal brand is the mixology and the quality of your drinks no problems um, check out a book that I have just received actually from Amazon it's called liquid intelligence um, it is absolutely superb I literally only got this yesterday I've already got stuff that I want to make from this um, book I've already bought some equipment that's on its way to me at the moment which is actually just um, two inch square rice cube trays so that I can play around with some different ice uh, and stuff like that it's such a detailed book I mean literally the um, the recipes are given to you in milliliters 
it tells you exactly how much um, liquid there is before you shake and after you shake in the finished drink um, to sort of 0.2 of a millimeter, uh, milliliter. It's extremely, extremely detailed, the stuff in here. Um, there's stuff about using liquid nitrogen in your drinks, which obviously be so, so careful with. Don't do it unless you've been trained properly. Um, I know Scott Young was putting around uh, an article about someone that was seriously hurt by uh, bartenders using... It might have been dry ice, actually, rather than liquid nitrogen, but the same rules apply. You need to be extremely careful with anything like that. Uh, but there's also stuff about home carbonation, um, using a soda stream to do bottle carbonation of cocktails, um, all sorts of stuff. It's absolutely superb. Uh, pick yourself up a copy again links are down in the uh, in the show notes and it is with my Amazon affiliate account so if you don't mind if you find value in the stuff that I do for you guys um, please use my link and then I get a little taste of it back that I can invest back into buying more stuff that we can um, have a play with on the podcast it would be pretty good so those are my kind of recommendations for what to do with your January um, this is going to be a little bit of a shorter podcast than normal but we're going to go with it it's cool um, so yeah just to recap a bar above cocktail design course it's fabulous pick one of them up really really good stuff um, adding value for your guests at the bar chuck in a little bit of magic card magic coin magic Stuff that you can do with the equipment on your bar, it's great. Any of that is fantastic. Um, add a little bit of flair. If uh, if you've not done flair before, this is the time to begin. Practice at home, you've got plenty of time. Bar bets, pop over to Scam School, find yourself some uh, bar bets that you're interested in, some that you don't know the solution to straight away. And if you end up with a, a guest that does know these bets and um, and wins one of your bets, no problems, buy them, a, buy them a beer out of your tips and then get them to teach you one. Because the chances are, if they know the solution to the bar bet that you've posed for them, they will probably know a whole bunch of other ones and you can find yourself a new bet for the rest of your guests. So you're basically just buying a new bar bet for a beer. Um, and mixology, so as I say, pick up a copy of Liquid Intelligence or any other bartender book that you've got. Just hit the books, find one of those, I'm sure you've received something bartender book wise for Christmas I know I was for years when I first started um, and I got so many of these books there's so many classic cocktails that are out there in the books that nobody makes anymore um, revitalize a classic do your own twist on it give it your own name don't don't take a classic change it and then still call it that classic because it's not anymore but create a new classic um, so yeah that's my kind of that's my list of ideas for, for January and how to make the most of the, the quieter time that we've got. So now, drink of the week. We're still going to do a drink of the week, um, although we're not doing a specific tips for tips section. All of this will make you more tips. It's all good. Um, and the drink of the week that I've got this week is called the Blushing Russian, uh, and it's a variant on the White Russian. It's taken from one of these books that I had for a while. Uh, so it's the Source Guide to Cocktails. I think this is Volume 4, yeah? Um, I don't think they sell this one anymore, but the current um, Source Guides have turned into what's called Difford's Guide. Uh, these books were written by a guy called uh, Simon Difford. They were put together by him. Uh, it, it's drinks from all over the world. I mean, this one is older. This is over 1,500 recipes, and it was kind of more magazine style. Uh, it's now a hardback edition, and it's a 3,000 cocktail encyclopedia of drinks. Um Again, there's a link to it in Amazon, down in the show notes. Um, but this one, the Blushing Russian, variant on the White Russian. So it's an ounce of vodka, one ounce of Kahlua, one ounce of double cream, heavy cream, and an ounce of milk. Or you can swap those two out for your half and half if you've got that made up already. And half an ounce of amaretto. Um, and you float the amaretto on top once you've shaken and strained the drink into a chilled cocktail glass. So it's essentially a straight up White Russian with an amaretto float sounds like it's going to be really nice so it's going to taste sort of like marzipan on top and then have your uh, your white russian underneath sounds like a really good drink to me i've not actually tried it out yet but I, it sounds like something that my partner joe is going to love so i'm going to give it a go tonight when we get back um from dinner and uh yeah so that is your cocktails for the week um enjoy the rest of your week and don't forget, follow us on Facebook, 
Instagram, uh, Bartender HQ picks the, some of the pictures up from uh, our New Year's Eve. I was making some cocktails here. Um, find us on Facebook, Twitter, at Bartender HQ, or drop me an email if you've got anything that you want to know, uh, anything that you want to be, me to cover on a future podcast, drop me an email, david at bartenderhq.com, and I'd love to have a chat with you. Until next time, guys, have a great week, and I'll see you next week on the podcast. Thanks for listening to the bartenderhq.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at Bartender HQ. Oh, and just before I go, I should mention, if you're watching this on YouTube and you just want an audio version of this um, content, you can go to our iTunes uh, page. If you just go into iTunes, search for bartenderhq.com or Flair Bartending or Bartender HQ, you'll find us. And if you're listening to this on iTunes, you may have guessed this is also on YouTube and it's also on our Facebook page as a video file there. So if you want the video, go to one of the video sources. If you want iTunes and you just want audio, go to iTunes. Hit the subscribe button, give us five stars. Everyone will be happy. Thanks very much, guys. See you next week.